Hi, my name is Rachel Geller and I am a certified cat behaviorist. I'm going to talk you through some techniques to help with shy cats at your shelter. If all of the volunteers are employing these same techniques, you guys will be much better able to help these shy cats gain confidence and learn to trust. So, let's get started and we'll do that with a particular way to play with shy cats. I call this interactive play therapy. Interactive play not only strengthens the cat-human bond, gives the cat more confidence, and provides physical activity, but it can be used as part of a behavior modification program for very shy cats. It can also be a powerful way to create positive associations between the cat and the human when done properly, and this helps the cat come out of her shell. For interactive play, you want a fishing pole type toy. This allows the toy to be the main focus because the string essentially becomes invisible once the cat's prey drive kicks in. The long pole and string will help to maintain the comfort zone for your cat. For a successful and beneficial interactive play session, you have to trigger your cat's prey drive. And the way to trigger it is to move the toy like prey. Think of it as the feline version of hide and seek. Alternate fast and slow, high and low, hide behind furniture, and so forth. Don't dangle the toy in your cat's face or move it too wildly about as that creates a defensive reaction and that is not fun, especially for shy cats. We don't want them to be on the defensive. We want them to think that they are taking control and leading the process. An extremely important rule of interactive play has to do with success. For this to be beneficial and fun, your cat needs to have multiple captures. When you are interactively playing with your cat, the game isn't about how long you can keep the toy away from the cat, it's about how rewarding the session is for the cat. For shy cats, the rewarding piece is essential, and that is the capture. For the therapy to be beneficial, the cat needs to have multiple captures. It can't be too, too much of a challenge, and she has to be able to successfully grab the toy in her mouth or in her paws. Sometimes people get too carried away with keeping the toy out of the cat's reach, and that just ends up adding to the cat's frustration or tension. Follow the cat's lead. After a capture, let her enjoy it for a little bit, and when she notices that the prey is not responding, she will loosen her grip, and you can start up the game again. Always let the cat enjoy her capture for a little bit before going on with the game. It sounds so simple, but it makes a huge difference in the session being rewarding for the cat. It's the captures that let all of those feel-good chemicals flow through the brain, and it's the captures that make the cat feel like he is king of the castle or queen of her territory. When you're ready for the session to come to an end, don't just abruptly stop. Slowly wind down the movements, almost as if the prey is getting tired or injured. As the toy gets slower and slower and eventually the prey dies, the cat will start to relax and feel as if she has accomplished a grand final capture. Finish the game with a really yummy treat that you know your cat likes. Since play therapy simulates a hunt, it's especially rewarding for the cat to enjoy a feast after the capture and it creates more positive associations with you and the cat's environment. This is the problem with the laser pointer. It never allows the cat to have a capture. The whole point of play therapy is to allow your cat to have multiple captures. It's the captures that create the bond, the positive associations, and the feeling of satisfaction for the cat. I would not recommend using a laser pointer to play. My advice is to find fishing pole type toys that the cats like. Da Bird and Cat Dancer are two popular ones, or even just a ribbon of fleece. Even if she is just interested in the toy and only watching it with her eyes, she is focusing on something else other than her fear. This is still positive and will be associated with you. If the cat does venture out, even just a little, engage her in a little play session to help calm her and be sure to offer her a treat as a reward. When a shy cat is hiding, a good thing to do would just to be to sit on the floor next to him, read, 
do work, check your email, talk on the phone. Don't make any overtures toward him so that, from his point of view, you come off as non-threatening. He will eventually feel that it is safe to come closer and investigate you. It also helps to get down to the cat's level when interacting with him instead of towering over him. So try to sit on the floor as much as possible. Another idea is a cat tunnel. Many cats like these for when they do venture out. Since it gives them a safe place to hide, yet they are out from wherever it was that they were hiding. It's kind of like a stepping stone. Even going from the hiding place to the tunnel is a good step. Gentle handling, petting around the face, head and ears are the best calming tools for frightened cats. And you can do this once he is coming to you more and investigating you more. Be sure to visit with the shy cat as much as possible. Be calm, encouraging, and supporting with your voice. Use a soothing tone. The cat will understand. Let him go at his own pace. Whenever you go near where the cat is hiding, casually greet him with your voice. When he does venture closer, maybe sniff at you or your shoes, just act as if nothing is earth shattering. Keep it light, be calm. Let him do the investigation at his own pace. It may take several sessions of you sitting near him, playing with him, offering treats, but let the cat set the pace of the progress. Be sure you don't try to drag a shy cat out. He'll only run away and have a hard time trusting you. He's not hiding because it doesn't like you. It's his way of adjusting and trying to cope with all of the changes that he has been through. Try tempting the cat out with a tasty treat or fun toy. He just might forget his fear. Feather toys or string toys attached to poles are great devices to coax the cat out into coming closer to you. But it's okay if he wants to stay in this safe spot. In these matters, it's always best to go at the cat's pace. It's okay to sit with a shy cat because every time you do this and the session ends safely, the cat will make that positive association. Food can be used as a bonding tool by feeding a shy cat special treats at a scheduled time. This will help him make a positive association between you and the food. Try a particularly smelly brand of wet cat food or traditional cat treats to entice him. People tune to fish is good too. Lavish love and attention on him, even if it is just you telling him how much you love him. Keep earning your trust with shy cats with daily care, playtime, and routine. Another technique I use is a back scratcher or petting wand to pet the shy cats. It can be a good starting point and you can gradually shorten the length of the handle by where you hold it. This allows the cat to have a comfort zone. You can very gradually, conservatively move your hand closer to the end, and in this way, you are desensitizing your cat to your presence, getting incrementally closer to the cat in each session. If a cat is super shy and runs away upon seeing you, try to find that spot where you can stand or sit and the cat will accept you there. Use that as your starting point, and from there, again, very gradually and conservatively move closer to the cat. These sessions can be done multiple times during the day. For more information about shy cats, or if you have a question about a specific cat at your shelter, please contact the Medfield Animal Shelter, and a message will be forwarded to me. Thank you for watching, and thank you for giving shy cats a chance.